So a lot of people out there have been contacting me about doing this test. Sony users, Nikon users, Pentax users, all of you guys, except Canon users, you guys have been reaching out to me and say, hey, Lee, why don't you put the A7R3 part of your with a D850 versus K1? Why not? Put that camera part of the challenge because I want to see that Sony sensor. I want to see what Nikon is missing. I want to see what Pentax is using under their hood. I want to see that Sony sensor. Why don't you put it in your test? And I said to myself, sure, why not? Let's do it. For everyone out there, you guys know why are we doing this test? Bragging rights. Yes, you guys just want to brag and brag about your camera brands. That's all you guys want to do. You guys want to see who loses so you can say they suck. That's all you guys are doing. So without further ado, let's get this test started. So a few things to know about this test. I took the A7R3 back to this real estate property and then thankfully I was able to take the same shot again, the same composition now, but a few things just shifted now. The centerpiece where the balls are located at shifted just a bit. The couch moved it just a little bit, but overall everything's still the same. The picture frame is still there. The table is still there. It's all in the same spot. The lighting is still the same. We are shooting at nighttime, eight o'clock. So there's no sun out there. Curtain is still closed. So that's what I wanted you guys to know. And also for color accuracy, the actual color of the wall is dark olive, okay? It is dark olive. I just want you guys to know that is dark olive on the wall. The picture frame is black. It's pitch black, okay? The ink, the art is black. The lenses, broken off 14 millimeter lenses. Once you put a 14 millimeter on a Pentax, it only registers 15 millimeter because that's the only option you can select. With a Sony, Rokinon was, I don't know what happened, they just, basically it's an adapter. Basically they put an adapter on their Rokinon and it fits on the Sony. The problem is, you're not able to see the aperture at all. So, just keep in mind, you're not able to see the aperture. I did bought a, you know, adapter for the K-mount to the E-mount and still, you know, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but just wanted you guys to know. So, there's no secrets. Just want to put it out there. So, let's take a look at the first image as we jack up the ISO to 64 to match Nikon 64 and yes everybody want to see this part you guys can clearly tell that the Nikon cannot handle its highlights for some reason the highlights are so blown out it's diffused so the background the details are diffused and so with that said look at the Sony it's not as diffused as the Nikon you can clearly see the details in the background so then Sony is handling the highlights pretty well and yes, the color accuracy on the Sony is better than the Nikon. And yes, every pro everybody's probably laughing right now because Nikon left the Sony and this is what you get. As soon as we jack up the ISO to 100, clearly the Nikon is lost in the woods. It's out of, it's gone. It's, it's too blown out. It's just can't handle the highlights for some reason. The spotlight is just, I don't know. The Sony, Handles it pretty well. Definitely the spotlight is turning kind of bluish, but basically you could definitely tell that the Sony is a bit better than the Nikon. But as you see the Pentax right now, the Pentax is really interesting. The Pentax is actually holding up with the color accuracy. It's holding up pretty well. And definitely you can see that the Pentax is pretty much true to real life at this point at ISO 100. And so that's a good job for Pentax part. The noise level at this point, they all look kind of the same. It's really hard to tell. So there's no winner in that category. So as soon as we jack up the ISO to 400 and aperture to F4, we can now clearly see that a Nikon is blown away. It's off. Nikon cannot handle this environment for some reason. The blacks aren't black. Look at the black frame. It's not black. Look at the Sony. It's darker than a Nikon. Look at the art, the ink. The black on the art is much darker than the Nikon. That is something you guys should take note of. That is a clear indication that the Nikon cannot handle this type of environment. And yes, the background, the wall is more darker than the Nikon. And so that is really obvious at this point. And for those people that don't know about blown highlights, if your highlights are blown, it's really hard to retain the detail. So that is something you guys should take note of. And also once we put in the Pentax, things starts to change around. Definitely the Pentax is really excellent. You guys can clearly see that the background wall is dark olive. Like I said before, the actual color of the wall is dark olive. The actual color of the black frame is black. 
frame. So when you're looking at the black frame now, you can clearly tell that the Pentax is holding pretty good than the Sony. But overall, they're doing pretty well. Definitely the spotlight, the highlight on the Sony is turning kind of bluish. The Pentax is actually controlling it pretty well. You don't see a lot of highlights on the Pentax, and that's a good thing. And so with that said, both files are usable, but the Nikon is, I don't know what's going on with the Nikon to be quite honest. So as we jack up the aperture to 5.6 on the Sony and ISO at 800, you guys can now clearly see that the story remains the same. The Nikon can handle the highlights. Definitely the background is off. The picture frame is off. The art is off. The Sony is handling the darks pretty well, actually. It's handling the highs pretty well. And this, you look at the art, the blacks on the Sony is better than the blacks on the Nikon. And that is very true. And if you look at the noise level, of course, 45 versus 42 and a half, 45 will produce more noise than the Sony, of course, which is 42 and a half. So that is something you guys should know. And as soon as we put the Pentax into play, the Pentax does it again. It's more accurate. The background is still dark olive. The Pentax has an outstanding coloration of the background that is good. It is controlling the highlights as good as Sony, as you see. So at an ISO 1600 and an aperture F8, you guys can now see that the Nikon is off. It's The black is off, the background color is off, the highlights is blown out. Look at the Sony file. Sony is blacker, of course, in the, in the blacks. Look at the picture frame. Look at the ink on the wall. It's all black. It's blacker than the Nikon. Look at the wall. It's darker than the Nikon. Definitely is closer to dark olive. And so, of course, look at the centerpiece. Look at the centerpiece. Centerpiece is much more well controlled with the highlights. And so with that said, the Sony is better than the Nikon. But once you put the Pentax in the equation, if you look at the color accuracy, definitely the Pentax is rendering true to life right now. It's dark olive, that's how it is in real life. So I have to give it to the Pentax right now. So with an F10 and an ISO Stereo 200, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the Nikon is just, it's just, just dead in the water. It's just, it's just over for Nikon. They're, they're not coming back from this. They're, the blacks are off, the highlights is off, the color is off, the noise level is, is crazy at this point because it's 45 megapixel. Look at the Sony, it's much better, okay? It's just, it's much better. But once you put the Pentax in, things starts to change a little bit. You notice that the highlights are more well controlled in the Pentax file. It's not blown out. But all in all, if you own a Sony, you should be happy. If you have a Pentax, you should be quite happy. For Nikon users, I don't know. It's just it's just not happening right now. It's 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 I own Nikon. I shoot Nikon. What is going on with my sensor? Why is it acting like this? It's 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 I don't know. I don't know guys. I, I get that. Uh, 6400, yeah. Nikon is um Yep, I mean uh, there's gonna be a lot of mad people after they see <laughs> Nikon is gone, guys. It's, it's, it's out of here. It's, it's coloration is values in there. They don't even know what is going on. They left Sony to, for this. What is this? This is terrible. When was the last time Leica made a good sensor? When the last time someone talked about, oh, Leica sensors are excellent? No, none. So why in the world, people in Nikon world were so excited when they have a sensor that's made by the same people who made the same sensor for Leica? I don't know what's going on. Look at what's going on. This is a disaster. Disaster. Please make a stop. I'm just going to change Pentax. Once you put Pentax in against the Sony, you're neck to neck. The Pentax, same deal, a bit more accurate than the Sony, but overall, I will give it both of them, you know, high regards. It's pretty good. Definitely the Pentax, it's a bit more cleaner at 36 megapixel in, in the noise section, of course. And of course, the wall background is slightly darker. It's, it's, it's a hair at this point. It's not bad. The highlights are not blown like the Nikon, so it's neck to neck with the Sony and the, and the Pentax right now. It's, Basically, I can lie to you guys. It's it's how it is. Do I have to sell you two? So at twelve thousand eight hundred, you know the deal. Same thing. Everything looks terrible right now. But who has the darkest black between Sony and Nikon at this point? The Sony, of course. Once you put in the Pentax, who is better? 
I guess the Pentax is better by a hair, just a hair. At this point, it doesn't matter because no one shoots at 12,800. So at this point, you guys are pulling hairs, but overall, the Nikon D850 sensor did not hold up to this test. And I apologize to all the Nikon users out there. I shoot Nikon, you guys know I do, but I'm not happy with a D850. That's why I returned it. So next thing we're gonna do is downsample these files. We're gonna downsample the Nikon, we're gonna downsample the Sony to fit on a 36 megapixel file. Then we're going to ruin our Pentex file. We're gonna ruin our Sony file by jacking up the exposure to fit the Nikon because Nikon can handle its highlights. So here we go. As you can see, the shadows on the Nikon after being downsampled, you can clearly tell that the shadow patterns on the Nikon looks pretty bad. It looks kind of ugly actually <laughs> once you downsample these Nikon files at 36 megapixel. It's pretty awful. If you look at a Sony, it's a little better than the Nikon, but overall, the Pentax looks a bit more nicer. And so, with that said, there you have it. That's your down sampling. So for the high dynamic range portion of this test, I'm gonna underexpose my shot, push the exposure in Lightroom, and we will see which files are retaining the most information. As we take a look at the Nikon D850, we will notice that the Nikon is still not up to par at this point. It is long gone. The shadows are off. I mean, this is ISO 100. Look how look how noisy the shadows look, right? Look at the coloration. It's it's off. It's it's not it's not even usable. It's terrible, right? Compared to the Sony, the exact same environment. You could definitely look at the Sony. It looks much better, right? Much a bit more cleaner. Definitely the coloration is there. The accuracy is there. It looks like a more usable file. Once you put the Pentex in, you will notice how cleaner the Pentex look. The shadows are nicer. The color accuracy is nicer. Pentex is known for their dynamic range. They have the best dynamic range and everyone's thinking, you know, what happened to the BSI, you know? I don't know what happened. I mean, Nikon had this BSI thing going on and I'm just like, you guys are supposed to be winning this, right? There is nothing to be seen from BSI. I don't know what's going on. The K1 is just a CMOS sensor. The Sony A7R3 is a BSI sensor. The new D850 is a BSI sensor. So I I thought the BSI was to you know give you more high dynamic range performance, better shadow detail, better ISO performance. I don't know what's going on. It's it's so what did this test all mean at the end of the day, right? What does this test really prove, right? It just shows you that the Sony sensor and the Pentex they're all just having a better recoverable file. Those files are really usable. You could definitely push out a lot of the highlights out. And so if you look at an icon, the highlights are kind of blown out already. And maybe it's due to the fact that there's fluorescent light or something up there. I don't know. The Nikon seems like it cannot handle that type of environment. And so with that said, I don't expect people to start switching system or anything. Personally, I own the Nikon and it's really sad for me to say these things about the Nikon because I've been, you know, I have a tons of lens for the system. For the Sony, I don't like Sony at all. I actually despise Sony. I really hate Sony, but their files were really good actually and I was really impressed and um, I'm just, I feel gross saying that. I, I feel really gross saying that actually. The Sony was really nice in this test. The Pentax was really outstanding, of course. It, you know, color color was there, ISO was there. I mean, the, the highlights wasn't blown out as you saw. It was it was a great, great test for Pentax. And that shows everyone that Pentax is a system to definitely check out if you guys are interested. Definitely check out the Pentax, it's really worth it. I own the Pentax K1. I also own a bunch of Nikons. I used to own Sony, but I got rid of them about three years ago when they started overheating. I don't wanna mess with that anymore but they do have good files from this test. So with that said, if you guys are going the Sony route, that's fine, I mean, their the files are great. With the Nikon, I mean, you know, I got three words, right? D800, D800E, D810. I mean, I lost so much money in that time period. And so we all kind of like, you know, nitpicking of what happens next with Nikon, right? So at this point, I'm not impressed with their sensor. They could have all the frames per second, all the focus points, you know, mediocre 4K. If you're not, your pictures are making me edit a bit more than the other competitors, I don't want it, you know. It's just, this is why I returned a D850. It wasn't for me. 
I really enjoy shooting on the Pentax K1. Everything has been really outstanding. I just can't believe the files that are coming from this camera and that's just something that's been overlooked from many people. And so with that said, I hope you guys learned something from this entire test and I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, I guess I'll check you guys the next one because I know this one was pretty long guys. So take care, take it easy, peace. So I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate and that's okay. I, I, I expect it, I, I've been expecting it, you know, even before I made this video, but there's one thing that drives me nuts. When people send me that one link that leads me to a test chart with all the camera brands you can think of and what people don't realize that there is a button at the bottom right corner that they show a lens and the shutter speed and all the settings that they use and the lens that's on the K1 is an old film lens. It's pretty old now, right? It's like 1999 or something, right? So when you guys are looking at K1, just remember that's not the latest lens, okay? They are using an old lens in that test chart. So please stop sending me that link. It's driving me crazy. And for everyone else, please do not send me a link with a JPEG comparison. That is ridiculous. I will not waste my time on no JPEG comparison, okay? Please don't do it. Please stop it. Stop it.